Hello, everyone, and welcome to Layer by Layer. In this week's show, we're going to talk about why we have so many Raspberry Pis and what the video schedule is looking like into the future here, along with a few other details about stuff that we've been working on behind the scenes. This is your insight to Slant 3D. Buckle up and let's talk for a minute here. I think that's one of the best intros I've done in quite a while. Um, so yeah, the Raspberry Pis. Um, the Raspberry Pi video w was a video that was kind of impromptu, but we had this come up and we wanted to get it out there for you all um, before we got distracted or ran into something else there. But if you haven't already, um, we have a bunch of spare Raspberry Pis. Go grab one quick before somebody grabs like 50 of them all at once and takes them all. Um, if you need a Raspberry Pi cheap, this is the time to find one because we're, we're, we're able to do it. Um, the Raspberry Pi story is really interesting because it's it, it's serendipitous because at the beginning of the year, we were planning on going in a direction with our print farms and our technology, um, but then we shifted. We found something different and better. Um, so we now have a bunch of Raspberry Pis. And the, the, the longer story that we weren't really able to go over in that video is... Um, the, the print, our print farms were originally designed to have our printers controlled with Raspberry Pis, um, based off of kind of the same kind of technology as Octoprint and that kind of thing. Uh, Octoprint, Astroprint, insert your name of whatever, uh, print farm software. They all use Raspberry Pis. Um, so we did too, because it was an easy computer to get a hold of and it was cheap, but it stopped being cheap and it stopped being easy. So... When we were we started working on version four of our production software uh, this year, um, and the production software is what controls all of our print factories um, and distributes jobs around everything else and automates everything and basically keeps us lined out because pro uh, controlling a thousand three D printers is a really really hard problem. You have to have good software and there's nothing off the shelf that can do it. We've tried. All of them. We have tried literally every print farm software. And once you pass about 20 machines, they start to become useless because the UI is bad and everything else. They're just not scalable. So anyway, we built our own software. Um, at the beginning of this year, we thought we were going to continue using Raspberry Pis till the cows come home, basically, because there was, there was nothing wrong with them. And we wanted that compute out in the farm for all of our machine learning stuff, as far as monitoring the machines and that kind of stuff. Um, but we found a way to not do that. And I can't talk about that too much, um, but we found a way to not have to have as many Raspberry Pis around. So we um, are, we bought, but we bought all of these at the beginning of the year because we're like, we're gonna build a thousand machines this year, whatever it happens to be. So we bought a, a whole mess of Raspberry Pis um, ahead of time so that they would be delivered sometime this year, hopefully. And they were deli delivered sometime this year. We didn't know when, but they showed up in the last couple of weeks. Um, and we've got, yeah, literally a pile of them. Actually, right there. Yeah, there, there's a box of them right there. This is all Raspberry Pi 4s. Um, Model Bs, 64-bit quad-core, 4 gigabits RAM, 2 HDMI ports, gigabit Ethernet port, Bluetooth, PoE, 5 volt, 3 amp, blah, 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 blah. This is 100 of them in this box. Um, yeah, these are all going to disappear on like Monday, but there they are. Anyhow, um, I, <laughs> we're, we're filming this before the sale video actually went out. So I don't actually know how this went. I hope it's going well, but they're here still right now. <laughs> um, but go grab one quick. The link is in the description on the angle IO site. You can buy them for 65 bucks. Um, and, uh, which is cheaper than Amazon. Cause on Amazon, I think they were 85? Yeah, I think there were 75, 85, somewhere in there. Um, so we're giving everybody a $10 discount because we have all of these, but we have to get our money out of them. And we think it's a good opportunity for folks to get basically some good, cheap Raspberry Pis from not a scalper for 100 bucks, which they're still selling for on eBay or Amazon, 85 bucks. Um, so anyhow, there's no limit on them. So if somebody comes and buys 50, they get 50, good on them. Um, we're, we're just trying to get them out of the building because we don't need them anymore. Anyhow, they were, yeah, that's that's how it came to be. Also, side note, just, just to whine for a moment, these, these, these came here like this, right? This is not a very organized box. We did not do this. This was not our fault. These were delivered to us by DigiKey. I'm calling out the DigiKey packers. Do better. Um, I know it's tough to like pack up a pile of these things, but gee whiz, um, come on. 
all shook around and stuff. Can't even tell the count inside of there, even though we know what's in there from the packing list. But um, we've got a bunch of Raspberry Pis. Go grab them fast. We don't need them anymore. We did some cool stuff. We did some really cool stuff. And I know that's like a terrible tease that I'm not going to answer, but we did some cool stuff, and I can't tell you about it. <laughs> uh, but no, the team working on the production software did some cool stuff. Um, and yeah, I got to give them props for that. Um, software in general, the software team in general has been doing some cool stuff. Uh, we've been shipping quite a bit of stuff. There was the POD app a couple weeks ago. Uh, we were going to have a Shopify integration come out here pretty darn soon. Uh, quite frankly, that is in the hands of the Shopify gods because um, it's going through uh, beta approval and that kind of stuff right now. Um, if anybody out there works for Shopify, hey, reach out to us. We'd love your help. We'd love the insight. We'd love to not be the, the random guy on the outside trying to get a thing published. Um, but after the Shopify app, we will have a print-on-demand app for Etsy and then uh, the actual API itself. Uh, basically, we are using these applications as kind of testing grounds because we can control them and we know how to interact with them before we turn loose the full API and let everybody else just create stuff. Because uh, we want to give people as much access to our print farms as possible, but in a controlled, contained, and reliable way. Because if somebody builds a, a business on top of one of these tools, it has to be a reliable tool. So we got to we gotta do that right. And so we're, we're pushing stuff as fast as we can to get it out there and get the warts knocked off of it. Uh, when the POD app launched a, a couple of weeks ago, Literally, the three days following or so, we were just debugging and troubleshooting, and there's still bugs kind of coming through, um, but it's much better. It has more features. It has more color options, um, and it's just cleaner uh, than the day it launched. But you you have to push your ugly baby out there in the world so that they can grow up and uh, become less ugly. <laughs> uh, around here, our, our mantra is kind of like, just be less wrong every day, because we're all doing something wrong. We just don't know what it is, and we're just trying to be less wrong. So... Um, anything that we ever launch will always start in a state, but then always get better. And if it's not getting better, we're doing something very wrong. Um, but just, but you'd never know what the right thing is until people actually start using it. So we try to ship as quickly as possible so that a thing can be experienced and used um, and then fixed. And if we screw up somewhere along the way there, well, then we try to do as well as we can on customer support and take the feedback and get better. Because um, that's all you really can do. Um, but that's the software news and updates. So yeah, a bunch of services coming out here real soon. None of them will be a subscription or anything like that. You'll get access to any of these integrations for free. Um, we think the Etsy uh, integration will be really handy here at Christmas because Etsy tends to spike at Christmas time like everything. Um, so if you have a limited number of machines, um, it'll give you the opportunity to basically overflow to us so that you can still deliver a lot of customers and get that revenue in without having to be chained to us or any kind of way. We never want to create a situation where you're locked in to using us because that creates a bad incentive structure. Um, but we think the, the, yeah, the Etsy and the Shopify integration will be really useful to 3D printers who want to get product shipped um, without having to buy and manage a bunch more machines. And that allows them to focus on customer support and design of new products and all that kind of stuff. So we're really excited about that. And yes, we're going to get these things out before the Christmas season so that you have time to play with them and mess with them and uh, give us feedback. And we can change to make sure that it's as useful as possible through that season here. Um, yeah, the Shopify app will be coming out in one to two weeks, actually. It's right around the corner. Etsy will follow probably about two weeks after that. Um, and then the API will follow sometime after that. We're going to leave that a little bit hairier because we want to, we're going to do a lot of data collection to make sure that it's stable. Um, but a lot of people have signed up for the API um, and we want to keep you guys in the loop of it. Um, so we will be turning it loose to um, those folks some more and opening up the beta class a little bit more. Um, but all that is coming soon. It's not coming immediately. If you're watching this video in the past, do the time adjustment or whatever it was of whether it's due or not, and look at our most recent videos to see if we've announced it or launched it. If it's not on the website, it's not launched yet. Um, but shoot us an email, and we'll get you on the list so that you can be in line for when it comes out. Uh, news about stuff. Guys, 
The 3D printing industry is a small industry. There is not a lot of news. There's not a lot of stuff. Um, literally, my show notes are news, as if I knew what was going on. I don't know what, there's nothing going on. Um, somebody released a new 3D printer again, or whatever it was, and I don't, yeah, it, they're, okay. Um, there has been some interesting research uh, reports that have come out. Um, a few new pieces of tech, you guys probably have all seen, like the color changing, like um, basically you run the filament through printer dye <laughs> and you, you can change its color and properties, which I didn't know was a new idea, but apparently it is. Um, it's a nifty bit of research and it was recently just licensed this week uh, by a company in Denmark. Um, who will be commercializing it. So that's a little bit of news. Um, but beyond that, there's not that much. We've got an Etsy app and a Shopify app coming out. That's the big news. Spread that around. Uh, um, video schedule. Um, our apologies. The last week or so, we have not been publishing as much as we normally do. Um, we, we generally do daily. Like we're, we're ramping through daily videos. So we do the design, print off the part, get it out, get it filmed, get it out. We were on a super time crunch there. Um, but we just this week, we had a, a YouTube kind of planning meeting, and we reviewed, okay, what do we want to do more and less of? Uh, and there's like two main video categories that we want to very consistently hit. And those are real 3D printed products and design for mass production 3D printing. Both of these are very popular videos and uh, formats that we understand and I think are good. Um, so we will be scheduling those basically on a weekly basis here and try to get them to a dedicated day. Um, work, stay with us for a moment. The schedule will be shifting. Um, and it's the internet anyway. The video is going to be there forever. What do you care what day it comes out? Um, but the, um, <coughs> where am I going with my face? The real 3D printed products we need suggestions for. Please tell us about that. We've got about five in the can right now um, that will be coming out. And then the design for mass production 3D printing is we've also got about four to five of those. Um, but they will probably go to start to, I don't want to say generate, but start to angle towards very focused, like key applications, like uh, 3D printed electrical enclosures. Um, or those types of applications, the real product itself of like, this is how you would normally design this. This is how we, ooh, actually, we've got one design video that we've got planned that is really, really good. And, and it would be really cool if when it comes out, you guys share it and make it go viral because it should really go viral. It should really go viral. It's a really good video. It's sports related. I won't say any more. But anyway, we've got those other videos coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, the standard schedule will be those two core videos, and then the third video uh, will be whatever the topic happens to be, general announcements about the company or news, that kind of stuff, our Fabulu partnership as news is available. Don't have any news, but those kind of things. And then we will continue to do the weekly podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, so that it'll all be dependent on that kind of stuff. That should do that. Alrighty, folks. That's pretty much all we got. Oh, filament update. Filament update. I know. I know. I know. This, the lead time extended on this. We literally, it's all set. It's all right there. It's all right there. All we got to do is kind of do it and reactivate it here. But the problem is, guys, we've been super short staffed and really busy because <laughs> we've been growing so fast to where filament, where we're basically selling it at cost is not the highest priority. And I'm so sorry to say that because it is something that we really need to get done, but it's a really hard thing to do and we have to do it completely and entirely and we have to do it well. So it's a big investment of, of time and effort to make sure that we deliver because if we, we launch this all and send you guys all garbage material, it's not useful at all. So it's still there. It's still coming. We're working on it. It's all down on the floor. It's all set up. We're ready to go. We just don't have the time or people right now to <laughs> commit to it. Oh, this brought up an interesting question, though. Um, there, when we did the test run, the test batch of it all uh, a few weeks ago, great response. We think we could do even more than that. Uh, there's been an opportunity come about to uh, potentially get even more extruders. Would you guys be interested in doing a crowdfunding campaign 
for a couple more extruders or one or two more extruders um, that we would commit solely to this project um, so that we can get down to $10 filament. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm, I'm saving this for last because number one, I just thought of it here recently because it wasn't on our show notes, but the if you guys are down to do that, and are willing to do community support for buying the equipment, we will donate the operation there and get $10 filament out the door um, or cl as close as we can get to that. And we will be very transparent about how that works around cost structure and all the rest of it um, so that you guys know why it costs what it costs because we think that's an important part of it. If we do the crowdfunding thing, we would definitely do that. So we could call it transparent, even though right now it's called Tangled. But if you are interested in helping us out in purchasing the machinery, um, we, we've, we've got to lead into some good liquidated uh, machinery to where we think we can get a hold of some more. Uh, but we don't have the cash outlay right now either because we got other projects. We're writing software and building more machines. But if you guys want this to be done, we will provide the warehousing space and the expertise and the team and the commitment to produce that material in that way so that we can drive the cost of filament down for both hobby and for production. Because if we had another extrusion line, then we'd be able to help out other print farms who are needing affordable uh, material. So uh, if you guys are down for that and interested in that, let us know. And if you're a print farm out there who's interested in lower cost material, reach out to us uh, and let's get a partnership going because there's no reason we should be competing with each other. The th plastics industry is enormous. The idea that competition is a concern at all for 3D printing is ridiculous. The market is so large, so expansive, and growing so quickly that if competition is the problem that you've got, you're bad at your job. So if you're good at your job and you want to work with somebody else who's trying to be as good at their job as we can, uh, reach out to us and maybe we can partner and you can help pay for part of the machine and we'll give you a bigger discount on filament than what you got going on right now. Uh, so reach out, let us know. There's, there's all kinds of ways of skinning this cat. Uh, we'd like to not have to do it completely alone so that the community can help out with this community thing that we want to do. Um, because we're, we're just stretched thin right now and we need more help. So if anybody out there is interested in helping in some kind of format, uh, let us know. Anything from even the web design for the Tangled website. It's almost all done, but you know, if you want to help out with this project of getting to $10 filament, let us know because this is something that can be a shared lift uh, where we can contribute resources and hopefully the rest of the community can contribute resources here too. And we can kind of get back to the roots of like the open source idea of everybody contributing ideas and resources and parts and pieces and time and effort to create something that's better for everybody as a whole. That is a really good implementation of community uh, where there's a shared resource. Uh, and yeah, so... That's waxing, waxing philosophical. I didn't think it was going to go that direction. Um, but anyhow, yes, we are working on filament. We will do it ourselves. But if anybody wants to help in any sort of way, whether through crowdfunding or partnering directly or just helping out with like some web design or something like that, we're open to it. Please reach out to us, info at slant3d.com. Besides that, go grab a Raspberry Pi real quick if you can because they're selling cheap and I'll bet they might actually be gone by now. Anyhow, have a great day, everybody.